Nicole Smith from Blood and Iron Martial Arts, and today we're here with TJ Sider from Strong Side Conditioning. What are we going to be doing today, TJ? It'll be the first part of a series we're going to do for you guys on both mobility, strength, and some kind of functional fitness for HEMA. So you may be wondering, who is this guy? Tell us about yourself. I've been appeared on, I guess, one Blood and Iron video in the past. Uh, my name is TJ Sider. I'm a strength and conditioning coach. I'm the head coach of strength and conditioning for Simon Fraser University. I own a strength and conditioning facility here in New Westminster, BC. I also work for Wrestling Canada and I've worked for uh, Volleyball Canada as well. So my background is pretty varied. Um, I was a professional mixed martial artist a million years ago. <laughs> and uh, I've worked with just about every athlete from every kind of sport on the planet, including Blood and Iron. Okay, so there you have it. Quite the expert on physical stuff. I've seen a thing or two. <laughs> okay, so tell us a little bit what we're going to do today. We're going to start off with a bit of a series on mobility and stability work. Uh, the differences between the two, why they're important, why they're a foundation for what we do with our athletes. Uh, and they're just things that you guys can do at home. They don't require any equipment. They're just a little, a little bit of free space. Fantastic. Well, let's get started. Okay. Okay, guys, so a couple of things. First things first. We've always established that creating a general warm-up is going to be really, really good for you guys to do. It doesn't really matter what you're doing. If you've been sitting around doing nothing, going immediately into a training session is not really ideal. So we always recommend doing something to kind of get yourself warm and the blood flowing. That being said, some of the mobility stuff that I'm going to get Steve to do today, my lovely assistant, uh, is, is, is kind of largely dynamic in nature it does lend itself then to being kind of a warm up all at the same time. So if you're coming right off the couch, just make sure that you don't push past anything that's kind of painful. If anything hurts, stop. If you start to feel lightheaded, stop. Any of the other good stuff that goes along with that. So anyways, first things first, I try to do as big a movements for mobility work as possible because they kind of work like a catch all. You're gonna stretch and move the biggest amount of muscles through the biggest amounts of range of motion, which is going to give you the biggest benefit when you're doing any sort of HEMA related work. Okay. So Steve's going to start off some doing something called the world's greatest stretch, which is kind of a combination of a bunch of things. Standing tall with his feet kind of shoulder width apart, Steve's going to take a lunge forward, nice long step. Okay. As he drops down into the lunge, he's just going to stretch through his quad and his hip flexor on the left side. When he's held that for a second or two, he's going to drop his knee to the floor and then reach forward and place his hands down beside the lead leg. Okay. From here, we're going to start to get into some upper back mobility. So while we've locked off his hips, he's going to reach his right hand, the one closest to his leg, up towards the sky. Notice he's going to try to create a kind of a vertical path, so stacking his hands and his shoulders. Bring that hand back down again, he's going to reverse it. So he's going to keep his close hand down and stack the outside. As he brings that one back down again, now he's going to push back. So his lead leg is now going to kind of push back into a hamstring stretch. And then when he's done hating that one, he can step back into a normal stance again and then do the other side. I really like this drill because it does just about everything. HEMA is a pretty incredible sport in that it allows you to do some very, very dynamic movements through an impressive amount of range of motion. And a lot of that stuff can be enhanced if you've got better range of motion. You can generate more power, you can get into better positions, you can defend yourself better, you can make more advanced techniques happen more seamlessly. So I like techniques like this. They kind of just work everything all at once. Okay. And hamstring stretch and back up again. So that's the world's greatest stretch. And that's number one. Okay, so the second thing that we're going to do, we've started off by kind of warming Steve up through kind of a, a general range of motion from the front side of his body. Now we're going to do a little bit different on the lateral edges. So his upper back on the back side and IT band glutes on the outside edges. So Steve's going to start in a push-up position. He's going to push back into the yoga position, downward facing dog, if you guys have done that before. And he's going to reach opposite hand towards opposite foot. So it gives him a nice big stretch to the upper back, warms up the shoulders, and the other side. He's going to come back to a push-up position, and he's going to swing one leg through. Try to reach as far as he can through, across his body. The straighter you can keep the leg that's being swung through and stretching, the more stretch you get through, through the IT band. If that's hard for you, though, just bend the knee. It takes the stress off. Okay? As he swings through, he's going to try to push his chest up towards the ceiling so he gets a nice tall position. Okay, posture is really important for that one. It helps stretch everything out again. And then he does the sequence all over again. So he pushes back into downward facing dog. The hand comes back towards the opposite foot. Reach back. The second hand comes back. Back to the push-up position again. And then he swings his legs through. And again, guys, just make sure that if anything feels overly tight, keep your range of motion short and don't push through pain. Okay, we're going to move into the upper body. So a couple of things with the upper body. 
The upper back or the thoracic spine is supposed to have a lot of movement. It's really, really important in HEMA to have that kind of movement. It allows you to get into better guard positions. It allows you to be, create better angles for cutting and, and for your attacks. So a couple of things. Steve is going to do something called the sideline windmill, now that he's done showing off. Sideline windmills are pretty simple exercise, but a couple of key points. The first one being, you'll notice that his knee on the ground is in line with his hip, so it's bent up at 90 degrees. It's really important. When that happens, it prevents your lower back or your lumbar spine from rotating. So it acts like a big safety pin. If his knee's in that position, he can't rotate through his lower back, which makes it really, really nice and safe. Stacks his hands on top of each other, and he's going to start drawing a big half circle over his head with his top hand. As he does that, you want to make sure that you follow it with your face. Okay, so watch your hand move across your body. The head drives movement, so it'll actually allow you to get more range of motion. As his hand goes all the way across, it's going to try to reach to the far side of his body, and then he's going to clamshell back over again. The idea being to be able to keep your knee on the ground, and eventually get all the way to the far side with your hand and your shoulder blades flat on the ground while keeping your knee down. That would be ideal. Okay? Again, just do this nice and slow. If you find anything feels kind of catchy or sticky through the shoulders, go really slowly through it because a lot of times it's just old junk tissue or, or old things that are in there. It's not necessarily dangerous if it doesn't hurt, but a lot of things will get stuck. So just move through it very, very slowly. All right, so the next piece of our mobility circuit is going to be something called a prone scorpion. Another catch-all exercise, this one works kind of that whole anterior chain. If you're familiar with HEMA, you know that from opposite shoulder to opposite hip is pretty critical. That has to have mobility and stability at the same time. So the prone scorpion addresses both of those. You're going to start face down to the ground, arms out in kind of a T position, and you're looking towards one of them. So keep your face flat on the ground. What you're going to do then is slowly and carefully, in case you have any lower back stuff going on, kick one leg back across your body. You reach your toes out, ideally towards the opposite fingertips, as far as you can comfortably until you get a stretch through the hip and the abdomen through that side. Bring your leg back, set it on the ground, and then roll the other leg across and do the same thing. Look the direction that your foot is moving. It enhances the stretch. If it's hard on your neck, look away. It takes some of the stretch out of the equation. So if you have issues, you can do it that way. And it's a little bit safer and a little bit less intense. Okay? As you get better at it, you can do it a little bit faster to warm up a little bit more and try to get your range of motion to be a little bit more extreme, trying to get the hands and the feet closer together every time. Okay? Hey guys, so one of the things that I wanted to address though, after we've done all this mobility work is, when you're practicing HEMA and certain things don't feel good or you have a hard time getting into a position or something feels tight, while we've started to address some of those problems with these mobility drills, you know, there's often a little bit more to it than that. Just because you feel tight somewhere or something doesn't feel right, it doesn't mean that you necessarily need to stretch more, you need to do something for it. There's always, there's always the, op, you know, the potential that it's something different. And the big problem with a lot of the videos that are out there on YouTube or whatever, like this one, is that they don't always address those problems. They can become overly simplistic. So with mobility work, there's a couple of different components to that that I want to quickly try to address with the help of Steve here. And that's, you can potentially have another underlying cause for this stuff. So if you can't get into a position, it might be because you're tight. It might also be because you lack stability in that range of motion. And the body just has this nasty habit of locking those ranges out when it doesn't feel safe in a particular position. Okay. So what I want to show you really quickly is why it's important to have a professional around that you guys can trust or that you can reach out to when you have problems or when things don't feel like they should. Okay. So Steve is going to do a quick demo for me. We're going to just check some range of motion for his shoulder and for his arm. So he's going to bend forward, put his hands on his knees. And I'll show this from the side as well afterwards, but just to give you an idea of, of where the range of motion should be. So you can't see this yet, but you will. His back is really nice and flat. He's got a nice neutral position. We're just going to bring his head down to a little bit more of a neutral spot. And all I'm going to get him to do is try to bring one arm up next to his ear. So theoretically, a normal range of motion, he should be able to get his arm in a straight line between his wrist and his tailbone. And we should be able to see from the side his ear underneath his bicep. So just to get an idea for you guys while you're on the video there, what this looks like. So I'm going to get him to put his arm down and turn sideways. We're going to do this again so you can see what I'm looking at. Okay, so now that we have Steve sideways, I'm going to get him to repeat the process that we just did so you guys can see what I was looking at. So Steve's going to bend forward just like he's doing a deadlift, put his hands on his knees, and I just want his back to be nice and flat. So if he can arch a little bit more here, that'd be better. His neck's in a nice neutral position. Okay, everything is nice and straight. So he's going to repeat the same thing. I'm going to get him to bring his left arm up in a straight line. Now what you guys can see is there should be a straight line between his wrist and his tailbone. It's not bad, but you can see he's not quite into full extension here. So anytime you're doing any overhead work in HEMA or anything like that, that's going to be fairly restrictive. 
If you look online, why can't I get into an overhead position? They'll tell you, well, your lats are tight, or maybe it has something to do with your serratus, or you need to stretch your pecs more, or maybe it's weakness somewhere. And that's kind of where you have to go with this stuff is it's not always a simple solution. Don't just stick a lacrosse ball in it and hope it helps. So with Steve, what we're gonna to try to do, you can relax your arm for a second. With Steve, what we're gonna to try to do is see if he's got a range of motion problem because his lats are too tight or his pecs are too tight, or if there's a stability problem. So I'll get him to go back into that position again. And just do your best, Steve. Try to bring your arm up as high as you possibly can. So if you can see this on camera, you can see that he's actually shaking. So he's trying, okay? He's not faking that. That's about his limit of range of motion. I'm gonna step in front of you for a minute and see what happens here. So what I'm gonna try to do is I'm just gonna create some stability in Steve's joint. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna gently push his arm back into the socket, which just helps to kind of magically trick his rotator cuff into working a little bit better. So Steve is gonna to continue to try to raise his arm up and I'm just gonna push his arm back into the socket again a few more times. So I don't know if you guys can see that now, but if you look in terms of his range of motion with his nice neutral neck, you can now see his ear underneath his arm and that range of motion has gotten quite a bit better, right? He's much more comfortable here and he no longer has to shake to maintain the position. So regardless of whether or not it got a lot better, just in terms of what his nervous system is doing, this is easier for him. Does that feel easier? Yeah. So what I'm trying to demonstrate, thanks Steve, I appreciate that. What I was trying to demonstrate is that when you're working through some of these mobility drills, if something doesn't feel right, don't just push through it. Make sure that you guys reach out to somebody in your area that can help because it's not always so simple as if it's tight, stretch it. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, TJ. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you very much for having me. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to what's next in the series, which is? We're going to be putting the stab in stability. Oh, that sounds awesome. And remember, if you don't put in the training, you won't get the result.